think. So I just wanted to say a few things about our company, Cognitive Neurosciences, tell you a bit about what we do and the way we do it and how it can have an impact on the healthcare system. So every com self-respecting company should have a mission statement, and that's ours, that we want to establish a global standard for brain health. And why is this important? Well, because 15% of the global disease burden is brain health, which costs the world economy over two and a half trillion dollars each year. So it's a fairly major issue. But first, let's have a little look at really the impact that easy to administer tools have had on healthcare management. By using in regular health checks, things like blood pressure in order to look for cardiovascular disease for cholesterol testing to look for heart attack and stroke, or cancer screens to look for various cancers, or even something as simple as doing weight and height measurement to look for general health and, uh, and things like diabetes. But these fast, cheap to administer tests have transformed healthcare and heavily contribute to patients being treated more eff effectively as clinical interventions, whether preventative action or treatment can happen at the right time when doctors can do more to help. But amazingly, there's no standard routine assessment for brain health. But looking after brain health should be a top priority. After all, it's essential for quality of life. And it's incredibly important as we strive for longevity. But the pressures of brain health are increasing, putting a strain on healthcare all over the world. And importantly, awareness is growing amongst patients and consumers are demanding more. But what do we need in order to address this problem? Well, the answer comes in the measurement of cognitive function. And this is really critical because it is the cause of many, um, sorry, it's a symptom of many, many diseases such as dementia, depression, anxiety, things like brain injury and many other neurological disorders. But early detection through the measurement of cognitive impairment leads to far better patient outcomes an incredible cost of care savings. And there's a figure there that the Alzheimer's Association produced for the early detection of dementia across the US population it could be as high as nearly $8 trillion over the course of the lifetime of these patients. So this matters not just to patients, but to payers, to healthcare systems. But why is there an issue? Well, to a large extent, this is due to the tools currently available. These on the whole are largely based on research from around 30 or 40 years ago. And these have a number of inbuilt issues in them. For example, the lack of precision. These are crude scales and require, often require subjective assessment. Um, they are pen and paper tests, which take about half an hour to three quarters of an hour to be administered by a specialist. So they're impractical, they can't scale. There's no way you can do this on a, on a wide scale. These are pen and paper tests. So, you know, literally they need to be in front of the patient every single time. And there are issues like language dependence education bias, and indeed, importantly, a learning effect. Because the more people do these tests, the better they get at them. So any sort of reliable measurement of patient progression is impossible. So really, this has led us to believe there's a massive unmet need in healthcare for the ability to measure brain health reliably. So what do we do? Well, we have a system we call Cognica, and we think this is the key to unlocking this problem. This is an AI powered, Software is a medical device which is delivered to clinicians and to, therefore to their patients through iPads. And what we do is we look at brain assessment in a different way. Using latest neuroscience, the test only takes five minutes and doesn't suffer from any of the biases. It doesn't need expert administration. It can even be done remotely. And like a blood pressure test is to cardiovascular health, this is an ideal tool for the monitoring of brain health on an ongoing basis regularly. Now I say we do it a little bit differently, so let's have a little look deeper into how we go about this, because I think you might find it quite interesting. So on the next slide, I'm gonna ask you to look at the screen and tell me if you see anything.
Okay, did anybody see anything on there? Okay, did anyone see any animals? Okay, that's great. So you've just now taken advantage of a powerful feature of the human brain. Okay, so let me explain why. So what we saw there was a short duration image. So it's a very short exposure for your brain. And then the black and white thing was what we call an image mask, which effectively resets your retina. What the test does is it exposes you to a sequence of these and asks you to respond to each one as quickly and accurately as you can as to whether or not you saw an animal. So this is called a rapid visual categorization task, which measures speed of information processing. And this measures the brain's ability to process complex information quickly and accurately. So to use a computing analogy, what people have historically done to measure cognitive function is to look at effectively reading out the hard drive, how well information is, is written and, and retrieved. We do the other side. We look at the CPU. We look at how well the brain does processing. We use AI to look for patterns in the response of speed and accuracy to all the different compositions of the, of the images. And this idea of animals is actually very important because this is an innate response that humans have, and also primates, ability to recognize animals, which is an understandable sort of you know, evolutionary adaptation, which makes sense. Either you would want to see an animal to catch it for your lunch or escape the one that's going to catch you for your lunch. So we're very finely tuned to this. And it works in a way that is very different to saying like car or not car or, or bike or not bike, because it engages a huge part of the prefrontal cortex. This is culturally consistent across languages and everything. So it can be used everywhere on the planet. And indeed, like I said earlier, there's no need for supervision. So this can be scaled and delivered through many channels. So let's talk a bit about what happens in the brain during the test. In that very short period of time, your brain works very, very hard. Okay, it's a real workout. The test engages your retina, your visual cortex, which is a massive part of the back of the brain. And then the motor, sorry, the prefrontal cortex from recognizing the animal patterns and the output is through the motor cortex. So within a few hundred milliseconds, a whole lot of your brain gets to work, which allows us effectively to examine the brain holistically. This enables us to see how it works as a, as a unit, which is very, very helpful because things like memory use very small pathways, very plastic pathways. This is a performance ceiling for the brain, this ability to process. And it can be used in a number of ways. I mean, we our primary uh, use case when we had this uh, developed this technology was for use for Alzheimer's, for early detection of dementia, much earlier than it happens. But it can be used for concussion, for MS. It can be used for recruiting patients for drug trials. It can be using for things like fit to fly and whether you're able to operate machinery and so on. But importantly, its ease of access enables people to take control of their own brain health. So how does it sit alongside other methods? I mean, there's other ways to measure brain health out there. Well, we have a unique combination of speed and practicality, which enables it to be routine. You know, the test takes five minutes. It doesn't need to be supervised. It can be scaled, delivered as software, all that stuff. Um, now, there are traditional pen and paper tests, which is what the specialists currently use. And that's great for specialists. They have time. This can be half an hour, 45 minutes. It allows them to look at a number of things, spend time with the patient, all important stuff. There are computerized traditional tests, which are basically digitized version of these pen and paper tests. And then we have these much more invasive and expensive techniques, such as MRI and so on. These are incredibly important. They give a very definitive answer to what's the cause of any issues, but they need the right patients to be sent to them. And that's where we come in. We are able to be used as an access point, as a recruitment tool, as a, as a screening tool to get people into these, these pathways, okay? And getting the right people in. So a little bit about us as a company. Um, we are originally from Cambridge, uh, which is the home of places like, you know, discovery of DNA and IVF and stuff. So a nice heritage on the academic front. Uh, we've developed a technology platform which is scalable, good for market. You know, we have a, a can deliver millions of tests, no problem at all. Um, uses AI and all these other things. We are market ready. So we're CE marked and FDA um, registered. So we're able to be used in clinical settings, both sides of the Atlantic. And importantly, we've set up a number of, of strategic relationships, you know, very importantly with intersystems in order to get our information to the clinician to be able to manage that flow of information. In the NHS, we have some deployments which have been very helpful in us, you know, understanding how this can be used in a healthcare system. And, you know, with research organizations, NGOs like Alzheimer's Research UK. Like I said, we're currently commercial, so we have a whole number of, uh, of clients at the moment. 
uh, using us in a number of different ways. And this is a very interesting thing about our tech. You know, as we show it to more people, use cases come back to us from clinicians in particular. But we're used in the South London in Maudsley, so one of the world's greatest mental health facilities, um, for remote assessment as part of their remote health clinics. In the Clemenceau, we're used for the monitoring of effectiveness of migraine treatment. Um, in the Dubai DHA, Dubai Health Authority, they use us at primary health care as a screening tool to look for brain health problems. Um, for the monitoring, again, of effectiveness of treatment for PTSD with ketamine, esketamine in North America. Uh, this is to do with population health management, looking for brain issues in a, in a, in a prison population. We, and we have a whole bunch of you know, other, other users there, including things like corporate health and anxiety. Because, again, measuring brain health is hard to do, but incredibly powerful in all of these contexts. So let's have a quick look at a use case and how does this fit into a current pathway. So I've chosen here you know, a very standard pathway, which one of the first we look to address which is really uh, that of, uh, of dementia and Alzheimer's pathway. So this is what happens today, okay? A patient will turn up at primary healthcare with subjective complaints or some issue, right? That's, that's either been reported by themselves or by a relative that's expressing concern, or it is entirely obvious to the, the practitioner that there's a problem. Now that is typically in the very late stages of decline. You know, the disease is well advanced by that point. The primary healthcare clinician has to take a, a, a decision as to whether they think they should refer or not. And some of these patients come in and there's nothing wrong with them, but they demand attention. They forgot where they parked their car. Again, the clinician has to make a call whether they refer. So they refer not in a way that's really based on data. And they go into the, uh, to the secondary healthcare. And the, what the specialists tend to see in clinics is a combination of the heavily impaired or the worried well. All of these are people they can't help. The heavily impaired are too far down the pathway to be helped with current techniques, and the worried well are time wasters. You know, this is a, costing thousands of pounds or dollars each time they, they, they enter the system. Then they have to spend this long process, which is fine, but it's, it's inefficient because of the things that are being fed into it. And then you have to come in and out of the clinic for repeat visits. So the system works-ish, but it's really inefficient and not very effective at catching people early, which is important. Flipping onto our vision for this, you can use our technology either at home or indeed when you go to see a, for a consultation, you can do it in the waiting room. The information is then delivered to the practitioner in your normal consultation time. They can have a, a brain health report effectively in there. Is there an issue or isn't there? If there is an issue, they can use their contextual knowledge about the patient and so on. What do they know about them? Are they alcohol impaired? Are they on treatment? Or if they can't explain it, they can then refer confidently and they'll know they're sending people in early. The same diagnostic process with the, with the specialist, but they're doing it with the people they can help, nice and early, no time wasters, no, no wasted money. And then you can monitor from home. You can do this every day, every week, every month. It'll report back into the system. They can say, okay, this is fine. Stay where you are, everything's working. If there's a problem, immediately react and bring them in. So again, efficiency, efficiency, efficiency through the system, but better patients for, for, for clinicians and better outcomes for patients, okay, much managed. And obviously what's very important is the flow of information through here. And again, this is why we, we're here and this is why we work with Intersystems because that gives us the best way of making this information available at the right time to the right person. So the overall vision is actually one of, of high availability wherever. We've just been developing a, what we call a software development kit, an SDK, which enables our test, as you saw on the screen there, not just to be available on iPads, but through any platform. So it could be gaming systems, definitely through um, operating systems for phones, through browser, obviously in and out, either connecting to to deliver data through, through you know, platforms like this, or indeed delivering the test through platforms, um, you know, into, into uh, pharmacies, you know, in VR, whatever. Anywhere that you can see an image and record a response, we can, we can deliver this. So that's, that's very, very important. And why is that important? Well, access to brain care should be a, should be a fundamental right. You know, it shouldn't have to be something that you can only access if you have time and money, okay? It shouldn't just be the preserve of people with the most expensive and uh, comprehensive healthcare. I think this is important, and this is what we want to do, is to deliver this out to people, get it used. And uh, yeah, that's our vision. We're, you know, we're very excited about the future. We're just getting going on, on, this, on this project, but uh, a long way to go. And if anybody's interested in either seeing it, I have an iPad here that you can come and test your cognitive function or is interested in learning more and wanting to work with us, we'd be very happy to talk. So thank you very much.